it is so good to be together again. It's uh, always a privilege uh, and a joy of mine to be able to share the Word of God. And when I say that it's a privilege and a joy to share the Word of God, I don't, that's not overstated. I can remember growing up as a little kid, um, my dad was involved in politics uh, up in Adelaide and all of that sort of stuff. And so years later, when I was starting to try to work out you know, what I was going to do and all that sort of stuff, I can remember um, getting various political parties' platforms. Uh, I can remember going to a few uh, political party meetings and all of those sorts of things. And then one day, I really felt that the Lord spoke to me. And he said that it's his word, the word of God, that can actually is the only thing that can change hearts. That politics won't change hearts, but God's word changes hearts. And if we can change one life, then we can change one marriage and one family and one community and one town and perhaps even one nation. And so it all comes from a changed heart. And so ever since then, I've never ever been to a political meeting. And I've always done my best to share the Word of God. And so tonight, I just trust and know that the Holy Spirit's here, that it's His Word, and um, that God's here to do it. And it's, it's more than enough. His Word is more than enough. And so I say it again. It is such a joy and such a privilege for me to be able to share life-changing words of the Kingdom of God. So last week we began a series and uh, as you know, each month for the next however many months, uh, it's my intention that I'll just share back to back two weeks uh, each month. And for now we're going to be going through these core values. Um, the core values do not replace the commandments, but they are fundamental beliefs that guide our behaviour and help us to bring heaven to earth. And so I'm not sure who was not here last week. Was anyone not here last week? Yeah, a couple of them back there. Okay, just a couple of the core values that we bring down. And so what we did last week, I shared out of Habakkuk, and in Habakkuk, he was going through a whole heap of stuff, as I declared last week, and God said to him to write it down. And, um, and then as you run past in the busyness of life, continue to refer to the wisdom of God. Refer to the things that God has said. And in doing so, um, we continuously remind ourselves of the things of God. And so that's the idea of those um, core values that I printed off for you so that as we're running through life, we can regularly um, just keep them before our eyes so that they guide our behaviour. It's really important. So last week, I'm just trying to remember, what what was our core value? People are, People are important. It's really important to understand that because when you're cooking, when you're praying, when you're giving, when you're serving, when others in our community ask you, why did you do that? We can simply respond. Because yeah. people are important. God is if people are important to God, therefore people are important to us. And so that's where we began last week. I'm wondering if anyone has got a testimony of how last week's message, people are important. Has anyone got a testimony of how through the week you were able to live? That out. Yeah, just come and share, that'd be great. You know what? If we don't live it out, all that's happened is we've just got some more information. And I reckon the gospel is designed to actually change lives and change our behaviour. And so it's really important that, okay, people are important, but how did it influence our week? How did it influence your week? Oh, it was just so 
Lord, on Wednesday morning, we're getting ready to go to a service at Marion, and the guys are having their little talk, and they're having little squabbles, and I said, people are important. <laughs> just remember what we learned. And then when we go to Marion, this is just amazing. I just get so excited, because I walk in, and I see this girl, and she's lost, and because I was an alcoholic and an ice addict, and I gave my life to the Lord. And so I walk in and I see her and I'm just, yes, Jesus. And then I go up and I'm making a coffee and she comes up and she says to me, I haven't seen you for a, for a while. And I looked at her and I do, I've never met this woman, but I believe in the spirit there was some kind of connection. And then I said, come into the service. So I just think, you know, Jesus, he wants more people for his kingdom. And then like when I, I separate myself and I go to the ladies and I'm like, um, God, what do you want me to do? Any message? What do you want me to say? And I feel salvation. And I say the prayer, say the prayer. And it's just going so hard inside me. Then I go out and I say to this woman, I'm like, um, and we sit next to me and we'll go do the service together. And we sit there and I said, I, I told her how I was delivered from ice. And she's just in a complete mess. And then she says, I said, do you know Jesus and do you know God? And she, she was like, well, I've come here a couple of times. And then I said, you want to say this prayer of salvation? Give your heart to Jesus. And she said, yes. And she just said it right there and right there. And even when the worship, she said she could hear blades of grass moving. <laughs> this is crazy. And then she's being delivered right in the service. And... That's right, like people are important. Like we have to look at everybody, you know, as a chance for them to encounter Jesus like how we do. Wow. So thank you for your message, Paul. Wonderful. Well, <laughs> so do you want to tell anybody, I'm not working, this is not so I can have some pats on the back. This is so that we can do the word. So did it help anybody else through the week, just really quickly? Anyone else? No? Well, I hope you continue to remember their core values that dictate and uh, just guide our behaviour. They help us bring heaven to earth. And so this week we're looking at number two. What is it? Anyone know? What's the second core value of Encounter Christian Fellowship? The pursuit of God. Wonderful. I want to read word for word what is actually in the value statement of Encounter Christian Fellowship. And it says this, We are hungry to know God's presence, to hear His voice, and to follow hard after Him. We believe that God is revealed as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. What a beautiful core value. We are hungry. We are hungry for the presence of God, to hear His voice and to follow hard after Him. To be hungry, to know God's presence. It's really important not just to know about Him, but to know Him. Yeah. A core value of ECF is to be hungry for the presence of God. Not just must know about God, but to know Him in every way, to hear His voice and then to follow hard after Him. We find this core value all through Scripture, which is really pleasing, yeah? Mm -hmm. <laughs> we want biblical values to guide our world. In John and chapter 10 and verse 27, Jesus is speaking and he says this, The sheep that are mine, my own, hear and are listening to my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. I love the wholeness of 
this value. Notice it doesn't just say we are hungry to know God's presence or that we are hungry to hear his voice, but it concludes we are not only hungry for his presence and hungry to hear him, but that results in the fact that we follow him. It's a whole cycle and uh, hungry uh, to, to, to do the things that he's asked us to do. So again, in Hebrew, this verse says, My sheep hear and obey my voice. It's really important. So when we hunger and thirst for God, and when we hunger to hear his voice, it's natural then that we do. Yeah? It's natural that we do what he says. And that's the whole of this core value. So how many of you know when you say to your, to your children, little Freddie, and you say to Freddie, hey, Freddie, put the bin out. And little Freddie says, yeah, yeah, mum, yeah, 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 and just keeps playing <laughs> on the go. How many of you know he hasn't heard what you've said? What's the proof that little Freddie has heard? Freddie put the bin out. Yeah. <laughs> What's the proof? Actually, when the bin's out on the curb, that's the proof that you've actually heard. And it's exactly the same with us, and that's this core value, is the whole core value. To desire God's presence, to be hungry to hear his voice, but also to follow hard after him. What a beautiful core value. I love that. It's a beautiful, beautiful core value. And that, of course, is what a disciple of Jesus looks like. To be hungry, to listen, and to obey. A disciple is a disciplined one. One who does the things that God says. So, you know, in Scripture, when the Lord said to uh, Elijah to go to a particular mountain, and there I will feed you, the ravens will deliver meat and feed you there, how many of you know that the particular mountain is important? If God says, go to the bluff and I'll feed you there, and you're on Kangaroo Island, <laughs> and you're wondering why you're starving when you're on the wrong line, it's important that we hear and are hungry and obey what God says. Yeah? That's a core value uh, of this church that family. We don't just follow his instructions to be holy. We follow his instructions because we are holy. It's really important. So we're not we're not we're not obedient just so that we will get saved, but because we're saved, we follow his instructions. Because I'm in love with Robin, I want to please her. Because we're in love with Jesus, we want to please him and to be obedient to him. We hunger for his presence. We hunger to hear his voice. And we do <coughs> what he says. It's pretty simple, but it's pretty amazing as well. We find this core value in Matthew 5 and verse 6. It says, Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be completely satisfied. You know, we think the new car will do it. We think a new wife might do it or a new husband, or a new job, or whatever, and we, we crave to be satisfied. And the Bible says that when we hunger and thirst for His ways and for Him, then we're completely satisfied. Of course, when Jesus speaks all through scripture, he generally has always drawn from the original scriptures. Some would call that the Old Testament. To me, the New Testament is not just an add-on 
And the Old Testament is not obsolete, but together, the Word of God is God breathed. All of it is so important. And so Jesus talks about the same core values that were all birthed in the original scriptures. We also see this core value outworked in the life of David. I love it when we can open scripture and see these values actually outworked. And so in Psalm and chapter 63, we find this real account of King David. King David uh, is out in the wilderness of Judea. He is fleeing from Saul, who is trying to kill him. Don't you just, like, can you understand what it might be like yeah. to actually have someone pursuing you to kill you? Not just to kill your, you know, your reputation or whatever, but here David is fleeing for his life. He's hiding in the wilderness. Saul has gone crazy and is out to kill him. And so we find David in that particular circumstance. What would your reaction be? If you were out in the wilderness and you knew that somebody was trying to kill you, would it be, God, not now, I'm too busy. <laughs> God, I've got bigger issues on my mind right now. Well, I love David's response, and here it is. Let me read Psalm at chapter 63. Oh God, you are my God. Earnestly will I seek you. My inner self thirsts for you. My flesh longs and is faint for you in a dry and weary land where no water is. Where's David? He's in the wilderness. There's no water, there's no food, there's no shelter. There's somebody trying to kill him and his response is, Lord, you are my God. I will seek you. My inner self thirsts for you. Wow. It goes on and says, So I have looked upon you in the sanctuary to see your power and your glory, because your loving kindness is better than life. My lips shall praise you. So will I bless you while I live. I will lift up my hands in your name. My whole being shall be satisfied as with marrow and fatness, and my mouth shall praise you with joyful lips. When I remember you upon my bed and, mem and meditate on you in the night watches, for you have been my help, and in the shadow of your wings will I rejoice. Listen, my whole being follows hard after you. That's exactly, word for word, the core value. David's life is being pursued. He's fearing his life, and what does he say? My whole being follows hard after you and clings closely to you. Your right hand upholds me. Wow. What does ECF do? When everything hits the fan, that. Is that a picture of us? I'm challenged. Is that a picture of me when, when everything goes ordinary? See, a core value of ECF is that people are important. Because people are important to God. Core value of this church family is that we hunger for the presence of God, to know Him, to hear His voice, and to follow hard after Him. 
I love the fact that this value doesn't say we hunger when everything is good. Yeah, did you hear that? I love the fact that this value doesn't say we hunger when everything is good. We hear only when you say what we want to hear and we'll follow you if it suits us. <laughs> That's not a core value of this church family. Notice it had nothing to do with circumstances. It reminds me of Paul and Silas when they've been beaten and thrown into jail. And there they are chained. But the word of God says, but about midnight, they began to whinge and moan and cry and say, God, I'm never following you again. That's it. Is that what happened? No. What did happen? At about midnight, they began to worship. Because worshippers worship regardless of circumstances. Worshippers worship just because we're worshippers. Because God is worthy of our worship. And that's what I love about this. So this core value had nothing to do with whether we're having a good or a bad or ugly day. Every day, what does ECF do? What do disciples of Christ do every day? They follow hard after God. They hunger for His presence and to hear His voice. You know when you chop down a tree and if you hold it on the end you can see all of the rings? within it. Each of those rings represents a 12 month cycle. It's not 12 months of spring. In every year that that tree has gone through and it's left a mark on its life, there's spring in there, but there's winter in there. There's autumn in there. There's summer in there. And every ring represents a whole cycle of all of the stuff that happens. I can remember not very long ago, we were out on a farm just out at our place here, just very, fairly recently, and I was talking to this young guy who uh, was hoping to get married. And we were just leaning on the fence and we were having a chat and, and we were just talking. He was saying about how beautiful she is and I said, you know, um, that doesn't mean you won't have issues. And he said, but she's so beautiful. <laughs> and she was an ex-model. And I said, you know you'll have some dramas, don't you? And that conflict within a marriage is normal. It's abnormal not to have stuff going on. It's just how we handle it. And it's exactly the same. See, sometimes people think that if I come to Jesus, that everything will just be spring. I'll have four seasons of spring every year. I want to tell you, you're still going to go through autumn. There'll be some times when all the leaves come off. There'll be some times when it's just dry and hot. And that's normal. It's abnormal not to have all of the seasons in our life. And that's why I love this core value. Because it had nothing to do with the circumstances it had nothing to do with all of the seasons of life. All of those things are normal. You're going to have some good days. You have some bad days. You have some really bad days. And you have some really great days. But you know what? Nothing changes. Every day we hunger to know Him more. We hunger to his presence, to hear his voice, and to follow hard after him. You know, 
know the word integrity is linked to the word statue. So you know the, the guy on North Terrace sitting on the bronze horse? You, can you picture that statue there? What do you reckon he's doing right now, that bloke? Hey? He's still sitting right there on that horse. And you know when the big north wind blows, what's he still doing, that statue? <laughs> he's still just sitting. You know when it's raining and freezing cold? What's that bloke still doing? He's just sitting on his bronze horse. And that's what integrity means. That regardless of the season, we're dependable. We're just doing the same thing. It's this core value. Regardless of the season, our integrity and our love for God says that God, I love you every day. And I hunger for you every day to hear your voice and to follow hard after you. That was the heart of David, to hunger, to, to follow and to listen. Again in Psalms, I've shared about Psalms with you in a year or so ago, Psalm 23. It says, the Lord is my shepherd. That psalm holds a beautiful, beautiful promise. In verse 6, it says, Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And so many words in the original Hebrew have dual meaning. And so one meaning of the word follow is what we've already been talking about, that we will follow hard after God. When we come to this passage here in Psalm 23 and verse 6, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. It's exactly the same word, that word follow. It's Rodolf in the Hebrew. And it means it's the act of pursuing, to follow after, to run after, to pursue, to chase, to hunger, uh, to seek as a hunter. It's an aggressive pursuing. It's not just a half-hearted, just, oh, look, if I'll follow if the you know, if it feels right, this following is the same as a hunter pursuing an animal. It's to run after, it's to chase, it's to pursue. Why would I fear the future for I am being pursued? That's the word, that word, word to pursue, the act of pursuing, to follow after, to run after, it's a committed pursuing. And so we do that to God. So that's our response, first of all, to him. So it's not just, oh, God, when the, when the time's right, I'll follow, yeah? It's like, I'm going to pursue God. I'm hungry for God, to, to, for his presence and to hear his voice. But the beautiful thing is, that's what he does to us as well. Tonight, I have great news for you. God is actively and lovingly chasing, seeking, and pursuing us to pour out his goodness and mercy. How beautiful is that? Right now, every day, God will never get, he's chasing us like a hunter chases his prey. God is committed to following us. He's committed to pouring out his goodness and mercy on us every day. All the days. What does all mean in Greek, Richard? Everyone. It means all. <laughs> all. All the days of my life, God is pursuing us. I love that. Yeah. Maybe. You know, you know when you feel so bad about stuff 
that you've done and just when everything's just turned to custard, God in that time is pursuing us, chasing after us as a hunter would his prey, aggressively running and chasing us all the days of our life to pour out his goodness and mercy. <laughs> so not only are we committed to him, but he is committed to us. You see, this core value, this core value of hungry after his presence, to hear his voice and to follow after him hard, is also our Lord's core value for us. He desires for us also to be in His presence. He desires to hear. He desires to listen to you. And He's promised that goodness and mercy will follow us all the days of our life and we will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. This core value is our core value to God but it's His promise to us. As we follow Him, He follows us. And even when we don't follow Him, He is still actively Pursuing us all the days of our life. I really hope that, like, people are important because people are important to God, that we would also be guided by this value every day of our life. And as we run through life, we would hold this. And if you want some more, there's the core values are all written here. I'll leave them. You can grab them and put them on your fridge and put them in your car and all that. Let them be a reminder as we run through life, as we look at it, that pursuit of God, that we remember, ah, yeah, it's a core value. It guides my behaviour. When I'm not sure what to do, I remember these core values that guide our behaviour, that encourage us, regardless of the circumstances, to be hungry and listening and following God. And to remember that He's doing the same to us. Father, we just thank you tonight for your goodness. Father, I thank you that just as a hunter pursues his prey, you pursue us, but not to destroy, not to take advantage of, but to pour out your goodness, mercy and loving kindness. Father, I thank you that our response to your pursuing is that we will pursue you in return. Father, I pray that these biblical values would be written in our heart of flesh. That we would understand that when we hunger and thirst for you and for your ways, that's where our satisfaction is found. Father, we are held by you. Father, I pray that this week, this value would be something that would guide our behaviour good days, the bad days and everything in between we would be a people that would be following hard after you Father thank you, thank you, thank you for your goodness 
Father, again, I'm just reminded of the already. Again, it just won't leave me tonight. I just really feel that um, someone or many people here, perhaps, feel like God wants to remind you tonight that He's already done it. It's already done. And you don't have to twist His arm. You simply have to receive what He's already done. He already knows you intimately and we can't trick Him, but we just have to stop and step in to what He's already done. It's finished. You can't change the fact that goodness and mercy are pursuing you all the days of your life. It's just about receiving that right now. So Father, for whoever that is, Father, I thank you that that word already would be theirs, that you've already done it. And so Father, tonight we give you all the praise and all the glory. God bless you. And so in a week or two or sometime we'll be carrying on these core values. I really hope that you're getting a lot out of there. Your values, they're the things that for 20 years have been guiding this church family. I hope that you would really uh, embrace these core values. God bless.